All right, well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. Welcome all of you to this very, very special broadcast we're doing. And I love talking about rejection therapy, the secrets to handling objections. And I want you to think for a moment, when you hear those words, re revenue therapy, what does that mean to you? What's going through your mind right now? And you know, this is one of those topics, one of those broadcasts you want to listen to a, a second time, a third time, a fourth time until these ideas are really just burned into your subconscious mind. Because once they're burned into your subconscious mind, oh, right. well, it's a then you're going to have day. these My ideas forever. Brown, you think about all it of you to this as entrepreneurs. Very, very is it, isn't it true that we all face some type of object, rejection, rejection at some point in time? And that's one of the reasons why that this topic is always, always requested. So for those folks that are tuning in for the very first time, I want to welcome you to Rejection Therapy. And we're going to talk about rejection proof. We're going to talk about the secrets to overcoming objections. And I want to think in your business right now, what would it mean for you? What would it look like for you if you were able to handle every objection with confidence and with ease? And for those of you who have a team out there, I want you to think, what would that look like? What would that feel like? You're able to handle objections with confidence and ease. You're able to not persuade, not influence, not convince, but to work with folks who really want to work with you. But honestly, truthfully, they had a couple of questions. And doesn't that make sense? I mean, isn't that what it's all about at the end of the day? Us helping other folks really get to that next level. Now, I know for some of you, once you've kind of understand how to handle objections, you'll be able to teach other folks how to do it. I get it. And then for others of you out there, you'll be able to take these ideas that you're learning and you'll be able to apply these in your own business and you'll be able to teach these to other folks. So I'm really, really excited. Now, for those folks that are tuned in for the very first time, you know, I love to start off the exact same way. No matter what time it is, no matter where you are in the world, I believe in my heart of hearts, D. Renee Smith, it's a great day. And it's a great day every time you wake up. It's a great day every time you have an opportunity to serve. It's a great day every time you make a difference in someone's life. Every time you have more meaning in the world, it's a great day. Every time you have more impact in the world, it's a great day. And every time you can make a dollar and a difference at the same time, someone holler at your boy, it's a what? It's a great day. <laughs> I think that's so true. And for those of you who are meeting me for the very first time, by the way, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. And yes, I'm a master, master practitioner as it relates to neuro linguistic sales. And neuro linguistic sales is the study of language patterns and how it impacts the sales process. But that's not what we talk about this evening or this morning or this afternoon, whatever time it is for you, wherever you're watching, we're going to be talking about I'd probably say one of the top three topics I'm asked to speak on. Well, number one is always closing. But number two, close behind that is the secrets to overcoming rejection. And that's so important. It's so important for so many reasons. But, but, but here's what I know about you. If you're listening right now, you might be asking yourself, hey, Shay, I hear. I signed up. Who is this conversation for? Is this one of those conversations that I need to tune in? Is this a conversation I need to pay attention to? Well, the obvious answer is yes and double yes and triple yes. Look, this conversation is for the people who fear rejection, who hate to sell. They don't want to sell. They don't want to have someone tell them no. They don't want to have someone tell them they're not interested. They don't want to have someone tell them this is not for me. This conversation, this conversation is for you. Now, this conversation is also for you if you've been hurt anytime throughout your life as it relates to rejection. If that's you and you can relate, if that's you, say, yeah, that, that's me. Or, or this conversation's for you if you avoid rejection. You avoid asking for the sale. You avoid asking for the contract. You avoid asking for the appointment. You avoid asking if you can follow up with them. There, there's a fear that comes over you and it also holds back your team. Then I want you to pay attention because this conversation that we're about to have, we're about to bark on, this is for you. And also, this is for all my folks out there who are just afraid to ask for the order. Now, you're not afraid to ask for the order, but when, when it comes time to ask them to follow up, when it comes time to ask them to take a step with you, when it comes time to ask them to 
buy your products or services, something comes over you and something changes. That's why we know this conversation for you. Something changes in your voice rate. Something changes in your tonality. Something changes in your body language. And you can feel there's something that's changing. I, I want you to know that if you're listening right now and you're tuned in, that, that I have an omission for you as well. And this is one of those conversations that I like to be transparent. I like to share what's going on with me, what's going on in my heart. And I've been rejected. I felt it. I know what it feels like. And it's not good. I, I recall my, my first major rejection. And growing up, I was a stutterer. And even today, if you tune into me right now, I, I still do do stutter from time to time. I really do. And, and I recall the kids teasing me when I was in the third grade. I was in Miss Kurtz class and Miss Kurtz said to stop teasing me. Right. And so I remember going home and my first rejection, I remember telling mother dear that they were teasing me because they said I stutter. I couldn't get my words out. Um, and it was a, uh, it was, it was, it was very heartfelt. And you know what, what Mother Dear told me, and this is this is only Mother Dear could tell you that because when you go home and you're you're hurt, um, you, you're you're feeling rejected, um, you're 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 kind of on that side where some of you've been rejected and, and you've cried. By the way, Mother Dear told me, "Don't worry," she says, "You are not a stutter. I, I, I'm stuttering now, right?" I was telling her, "I'm stuttering now." She says, "No, no, you're not a stutter." Do you know what Mother Dear told me? She said, "You don't stutter." You, your brain just thinks faster than theirs. And so you're talking as fast as your brain is thinking. So I, I grew up believing all the way until I got to college that I thought faster than everyone else. That's why I talked faster than everyone else and I couldn't get it out. And it wasn't until college that I found out that was some foolishness, by the way. <laughs> I found out it was some foolishness. But, but that was a rejection that I had. That was, a, that, was, that was a rejection that held me back. And so I became afraid once I learned that I was a stutter. I became afraid to speak up in class. I became afraid to raise my hand. I became afraid to state my opinion. And if that's you and you've, you've had that fear of rejection, maybe you were rejected along the way and it was something that not only did it happen to you in childhood, but, but, but for me, it was something that I carried into adulthood. And there, there's some of you that, that, that are listening right now as I'm speaking and you're like, you know what, Shay? I've been there. I've been rejected. I've been rejected in, as a child. I've been rejected as an adult. And it's something that you've carried into adulthood. And, it, and then right now, it kind of impacts your business. It impacts your identity. And, and we're talking about rejection therapy and the secrets, but it's kind of held you back. And yeah, my mother dear didn't quite tell me the truth, but it was something that I held on to. And here's something that I learned just from that lesson that I learned. I want you to think about what you've learned from the rejection that you've had in your childhood. What I learned is an old saying that they say is, as you think of, so shall you be. Just because mother dear told me that I wasn't a stutter, just because mother dear told me that I thought faster than I could talk and everyone else was just a slow thinker, it, it, it allowed me to continue to move forward and put that to the side. And that's what we're going to talk about. We get into rejection therapy, put that to the side and continue to move forward. This was important. This was important for me to have the breakthrough that I had. Now, you might be wondering for some of you who are tuned in for the very, very first time. Some of you got this email for it. And if you're an entrepreneur out there right now, and you want to know who is Shay Brown. Um, if you're an entrepreneur right now and you're watching, there's someone you know that needs revenue therapy. There's someone you know that needs rejection therapy. Do me a favor. Hit the share button right now. I'm going to get into the good stuff right now. Hit the share button. Hit the watch party button. Hit that button right now. When you hit that button, just say it's time for revenue therapy. Hashtag, it's my time. Just put, it's time for revenue therapy. Hashtag, it's my time. Pay this message forward, Jan. Pay this message forward, Ann. Pay this message forward, Rakia. Rakisha, play this message forward, for Lamora. All of you who are watching right now and all the new folks who are just tuning in for the very first time, you don't even know who I am. You got this message. You got this email. You got the ad and you showed up. You're like, who in the LL is Shay Brown? Well, a little bit about myself, by the way. Let me first, before I tell you about me, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in love before? And the obvious answer is yes. Whether you're married or not, whether you're in a relationship or not, somewhere along the way, you've been in love. And I want you to remember what that felt like. 
I want you to remember being in love and how you were starry eyed. And I've been there. I've been there where I've been in love. And I know that is so, so important. And some of you have been there. Some of you have been in love. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. But also, I've also been divorced. I remember my wife walking out on me after I started my own business and said, this is not for me. I burned through the family money. I had stressed us out. And how many of you out there, if you're watching right now, would agree with me when you have finances and they're not going right, it can put a stress on a marriage. It can put a stress on a relationship. So I went from being so in love to then turn around a short while later, being divorced, trying to be in business, trying to, trying to take the little money I had when I got laid off back on 2004 May 31st. And I said, I want to start my own company. And she was saying yes. But then after 90 days, when the money wasn't there and the clients weren't there and it was so much stress, and I'm sure there was other things involved. Another rejection. I went through a divorce and anybody has been through a divorce. No, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. But it doesn't, it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. I remember being upstairs and sons come running downstairs. Said, dad, dad, someone's stealing the car. And I remember running all the way downstairs. I remember, remember looking out the window, looking out the window, and there was my car. It was a Lexus truck being towed. The tow truck looks at me. I look at them. I give them the nod. My car was being repossessed. I turned to my son. I said, don't worry. Don't worry. I lied. I never lied. Never lied. I told him, don't worry. Don't worry. The car is just going down to the garage. That wasn't true. That wasn't true. And then I turned around, and then I found myself in bankruptcy. Because when you're going through business and you don't pay your bills, you don't have any clients, you run out of money. No one tells you about rejection therapy. It wasn't what existed back then. You found yourself feeling like a failure as a father, feeling failure as a husband, feeling failure as a man, failure as an entrepreneur, being fired, bankruptcy, divorce, repossession. You add all this all together. It doesn't equal, doesn't equal a good story. But here's what I learned. Going through rejection, going through times, going through tough times. I learned I learned this and I want you all right now as, as you're listening. I want you all to jot this down. You know, put this down, you know, because here's something that I learned that will make a difference for you. Just like it made a difference for me. And this is so.
So here's what I learned, ladies and gentlemen. Here's what I learned. And this is what I want you to write down in your notes. And this is so important. And this is what I learned going through all that, all those tough times. Everyone jot this down. Can you see the screen? If you can see the screen, jot this down in your notes. Winners never quit. Someone do me a favor. Someone do me a favor. All the winners out there all my champions out there, all the folks who know that this is your time, that this is your year, and you believe that the best is still yet to come. Look right below the video, look right below the video and write these words, winners never quit. Go ahead and jot that down right now. Winners never quit. No, seriously, seriously, like this is the time. And I want you to put that in your notes. And that's something that I learned going through the divorce. That's something I learned going through repossession. That's something that I learned going through very, very difficult times is that winners never quit. No matter what, no matter what's going on, Lance, no matter what's going on, Jan, no matter what's going on, Pony, winners never what? Winners never quit. We keep on going no matter what. And as you're writing those words right, right now below the video, the winners never quit. As you're writing those words, I want you to know in my heart of hearts that it's possible. That right now, whatever your revenue goes is, it's possible that you could achieve those. I want you to know that right now, no matter what times you're going through, some of you are doing really, really well right now. And, and, and you want to go to another gear and you want revenue therapy. It's time for some rejection therapy. I want you to know that it's possible that you can achieve your goals. You can achieve all those things that you really, really always wanted. You can give yourself a raise right now because selling will solve any business problem. And when you embrace that, when you embrace serving and you embrace selling, I'm going to get into rejection therapy. When you embrace that, then anything that you want to accomplish, all the resources you need to purchase, they can be purchased right now. So as Tina Holman is out there and Lance Jones says winners never quit and Jan says winners never quit and either says winners never quit and D. Wilkins says winners never quit. It is so true. It is so true. It is so possible. And I want you to know, they always say our sales superstars, I always say they aren't born. Sales superstars aren't born. Sales superstars, the champions, they're made. And every single one of you, you're a champion. How do I know? Because I have the pleasure of working with and making champions every single day. And it's what our gift is, what we're called to, is to make sure that you have the resources necessary to execute the vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And so I have two outcomes for my time with you today, two outcomes. My number one outcome is to share with you the best ideas I know on rejection therapy. So you can turn that around so you can know what to say, when to say, and how to say it. Some of you, it'll be great trainer, trainer material. And my promise to you, you're going to walk away with one idea. And how many ideas do you need to change your life? How many ideas do you need to make a difference? How many ideas do you need to go to the next level? Everyone say one. Say one, say it, with me right. say it with me real loud, one. That's right, because one good idea implemented is better than a thousand ideas you know right now. And this is your moment. This is your time. And my second outcome is to make sure at the, at the very end, for those that want to stay in this conversation, you're ready for rejection therapy, we're going to share with you step by step how you can do that over and beyond today. Because rejection is not a reflection of how good or bad you are. Someone jot that down in your notes. I was talking to someone yesterday. I told him I was going to be doing rejection therapy, something I have not taught publicly in I think seven or eight years. And, and I reminded this person on the call, this person's going through some tough times right now in their business, and they had had some really good times. And one contract after another contract after another contract did not renew itself. It expired and didn't renew. One went to a competitor, and they said, man, Shay, we're doing everything. Why is it? And here's what I share with them. I'm going to share with you. It can make a difference for you. Rejection is not a reflection of how good you are. Isn't that so true? Isn't that so, so, that is so true. So, so what is it, Shay? No one, including me, including you, no one likes to be rejected. None of us. It's just not in our DNA. But, but at the same time, everyone has been rejected. Everyone has struggled. Everyone's had that moment in time where it just didn't go the way they want. And, and, if, and if we were all in, in, in a big event right now and there was, I don't know, a couple hundred of you and I was on a stage, let's say, for example, or, or you was watching as you are this broadcast and I was to ask the question, how many folks out there have ever been rejected in their life? You know, you know how many hands are going to go up in that room? Do you, you realize that some people are going to put up two hands because everyone has been rejected. But don't worry about that. This is your time. This is your year. Someone hit the watch party button. Someone hit the share button. Pay this message with your 
with your tribe. Pay this message with another entrepreneur because we're about to have a breakthrough and talk about how you can have rejection therapy. And for some of you, you need some revenue therapy. <laughs> it's like time to kind of jump to a whole nother level. Let me let me go and share my, my core philosophy. Let's do this in about a minute. Let's get my core philosophy. My core philosophy is the four S's. And the four S formula is something that we've created. Our methodology is what we've used over the last 15 years. If you're hearing it for the very first time, which many of you are, just give me a second. I'm going to share it with you. And then we're going to go ahead and slow down and we're going to get into rejection therapy. The secrets, well, to handle objections with confidence ease. But let me, let me, let me, let me, let's just walk them through it. I love doing that. I just love it. Here's what I believe. Everyone jot this down in your notes. Someone put this right below the video. Systems be goals every single time. And so we're going to talk about systems in your business. In this case, rejection therapy, how you handle rejection in your business, how you handle it from a sales perspective, how you handle it when things don't go right. So systems be goals every single time. And all you got to do is think about the systems you have in your business right now. This is a core philosophy. This is one of my philosophies. You got to have a, a principle that you stand on, that you believe in. And, and I know the goals are always out there, but systems are what we're doing every single day. And isn't it true that our business is just a collection of systems working together? We have systems in our relationship that make it right. We use systems in our finances to make sure our money isn't funny and our change ain't strange. <laughs> We, we, we have systems that we use in our health, in our diet. So systems, we know when you have a system and you use the routine, it'll be goals every single time. So the 4S formula, and I'm done. The 4S formula real quick is S plus S plus S equals S. It's my core philosophy. I love sharing it. I love sharing it. Let me go and give you what that means. System, someone jot this right below the video. Someone put this right below the video. Please put this right below the video. Systems plus strategy plus sales equals a successful CEO. Someone, someone write that down for me real quick. Systems plus strategy plus sales equals a successful CEO because systems beat goals every single time. That's what we believe. The S plus S plus S equals S formula. If you get this into your DNA, it will make a difference. The question only comes up, Shay, what is a system? Well, a system is duplicatable. A system is repeatable. A system, when you get it right, a system is something that you can hand off to someone else to do the work and it goes on without your ongoing supervision. Some of you need systems right now in your business. One of them is a sales system. You need a marketing system. You need an automation system. You need a media system. But I'm only talking about the money right now. So systems are repeatable. Systems are duplicatable. Systems beat ideas every single time. You give me someone that has a good idea and you give me someone that has a system. You say, Shay, which one do you want? Both are needed. Give me the person that has a system to put it in place in order to generate revenue. And I'll take them over anybody that has an idea any day of the week. McDonald's was just a system. It was a hamburger already existed. French fries already existed. Coca-Cola was there. Ray Kroc found it many years later in his 60s. And you know what he did? He just put together a system that turned into one of the baddest, biggest franchises of my generation. Uber which is a local, as a, as a system is used today, just connects drivers to people who want to get a ride. But they have a system in place. Here's the question. What's your rejection system that you have? Okay, I got to move forward. I got to move forward. Okay, okay. Give it to him one more time. Say, let's go, let's go. We got to go, we got to go. Systems plus strategy plus sales equals successful CEO. Let me walk you through it. What is a system? It's repeatable. It's duplicatable. What is a strategy? We believe in the reven evergreen revenue model, a clear roadmap, that's the how-tos to implement the system. So you got a system, but now you need a roadmap. What's your system to handle rejection? What's your system to close deals? What's your system to get in front of the right people? Systems beat goals every single time. Someone jot that right below the video like Jan just did, like Katisha Smart just did, like Anna just did. Systems beat goals. So what is sales, Shay? Because you keep mentioning the word sales. You know this is my philosophy, so I got to hang out here for just a moment. What is sales? Sales is a source that provides the revenue to purchase the resources. See, the challenge you have in your business is you don't have all the resources you need because you don't have the revenue to go hire someone. You don't have the revenue or enough revenue, I should say, to upgrade your technology. You don't have enough revenue to pay someone to do the work. You don't have enough revenue to run Facebook ads. You may not have enough revenue right now to do online marketing. And so, so you're only constrained, not by who you wanna serve, not by how you serve them, but truthfully, in your heart of hearts, the one thing that's holding you back 
is you don't have the resources because you don't have the revenue. So therefore, you can't execute the vision you have for yourself, the vision you have for your loved ones and the vision you have for the people you were called to serve. So while I showed up to teach you rejection therapy. I showed up this night or this morning, this afternoon or whatever time it is for you in the world to give you the revenue therapy. That's the rocket fuel that you need right now. I want you to hear me to get into this because systems beat goals every single time. So, so now that you know what sales is, the question always comes up is, Shay, what is a successful CEO? Because you keep hollering successful CEO, hollering successful CEO. I thought you were the happy entrepreneur. Well, I am the happy entrepreneur. But here's what I know. You can be happy and broke. You can be happy with no customers. You can be happy and not live in a house that you want to live in. You can be happy and not drive the car you want to drive in. So it's not, this has nothing to do with being happy. Here's what a successful CEO understands. A successful CEO, put this in your notes, a successful CEO is a person with more cash flow. If that's you, then this conversation I'm about to go into, warp speed, this conversation for you, more cash flow. Or maybe you're someone right now, you just need more profits in your business. Holler at your boy, she I just need more profits. She I just need more profits. Got it, got it, got it. Or, or, or maybe, maybe you just need the freedom to spend time with the ones that you love the most and do what you want to do. More cash, more profits, and more freedom. If that's you, more cash, more profits, more freedom. If that's you, more cash, more profits, more freedom. What? More cash, more profits, more freedom. Shay, holla at me. I'm hollering at you as loud as I can. Then I want you to write this right below the video. I want you to make a commitment that you're going to say this to yourself seven times a day for the next seven days. Just these three words. I'm sorry, five words. I am a successful CEO. Hashtag systems be goals every single time. I am a successful CEO. Hashtag systems be goals every time. I am a successful CEO. If that's you, look right below the video. Make that decoration right now that I, I am a successful CEO because I have more cash flow. I have more profits. That means I spend less than I make. And, and I got the freedom because I got a team. I got the freedom because I hire people. I got the team. I got the freedom to do the things I want to do when I want to do them. That right there is a successful, that right there is a successful, say it again, Shay, that is a successful CEO. So that's right, systems plus strategy plus sales equals successful CEO. Wherever you go in the future, don't, don't call yourself a grindpreneur. Don't call yourself a, a faithpreneur. Don't call yourself an all nightpreneur. Don't call yourself a happypreneur or a mompreneur or a dadpreneur. When you walk here, you hold your head up high and say, I am. A successful CEO. I make a dollar and a difference. I am a successful CEO. I have more meaning in the world and I make more money. I am a successful CEO. Why? Because I make impact. And um, I address some income too. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. These are all just principles that we stand on. Now we get to the good stuff. These are all just principles that we stand on. So now I got to get into really Rejection therapy, because principles are ways to successfully dealing with reality until you get what you really want out of life. So you got to stand on principles. So now you stay on the principle that systems be goals every single time. Someone, someone hit the share button right now. Someone hit the watch party button right now. We hit that button. We hit that button. Write this down in your notes or, or put this right in the notes. Systems be goals every single time. Every single time. So let's 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 now get into rejection therapy and handling rejections is the key really to greater success. Is it your team being able to handle rejection, your your team being able to understand that everyone is not your customer, your team understanding that everybody is good business, your team understand that things don't go always the way that you want them to, but it's okay. It is the key to greater success. Handling objections unlocks your personal greatness. So no longer will you be held back by your personal greatness. No, 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 no. And once you're able to handle objections at the end of the day, it's going to make you unstoppable. You're not going to try to convince, persuade, or influence, or do something sneaky with someone else. That's not going to be you. That's not going to be you. What's going to be you is you're going to be able to serve and then sell. Service and then sell. Serve and then sell service and then sell. See, if that's you and you're in that line, if that's you, then you will be unstoppable. You will continue to make a difference. You will do something different than no one has ever done before. But the question always comes up is, how do I do this, Shay? Intellectually, I get it. 
it makes sense and it makes sense. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. It makes sense. C E N. I mean, S E N S E. And it makes sense. Mm. It makes sense and it makes sense. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like I like that. So let me let me let me tell you why I got this philosophy of rejection therapy for. Um, give me a minute. I want you to watch this very very carefully. You can't hear the the volume, and someone look right below the video and say you can't hear the you can't hear the volume. Hopefully we got this thing right, and I want you to see this. If not, I'll walk you through how the philosophy of rejection therapy came up, and then once once I walk you through that, which I'm going to do, then I'm going to get into rejection therapy, and then I'm going to walk you through how you can create the life that you really really want the way you always wanted it. But I want to give you the background. I want to give you the narrative. I want to show you something. Can we show that to him? I, will, I, I want to show you something that, that's going to make a difference for you for where you are in the world right now. And it should come up in about a second or two. Okay, I don't think you're quite getting the um, the sound right this very second. Let me just let me do something one more time, and let me see if that will play through. Okay, let's let's try it one more time. That's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're not gonna let rejection hurt us. <laughs> That's not what we're gonna do. All right. So we're going to see if this plays. Let's see if it plays now. Okay, well, they're telling me that you can't hear it, but don't worry, don't worry. We did our best. We did our best. Sometimes, <laughs> even when we're live, even when we're live, this kind of happens. It's okay. It's okay. Someone say Shay, it's okay. Say Shay, it's okay. Um, and so the volume is now back. So I, I apologize if you couldn't if you couldn't hear anything. I, I certainly apologize for that. Um, let's get into rejection therapy right now. And let's talk about how to handle rejection. And the video I was going to show was a video of Zhao Jiang. And he's the one that went out and got 100 no's, um, had over a couple million views on that particular video. I'll make sure I send that out to everyone out there. I want to talk about how you can handle rejection yourself. Let me give you a strategy, and then I'll give you some words that you can use. There's a couple of things that you can do. Let's, let's go ahead and show that to him. That's, that, that's fine. Let's, let's go ahead and show it to him. Um, so couple things you can do. The first thing that I want you to do when you start getting a no, because your whole job is going to be able to go out there and get a no, is one, I want you to create a rejection uh, diary. So I want you, every time someone gives you a no in your business, I want you to start recording. I'm going to give you some ways to do that. I want you to start writing it down so you get associated to getting the rejection. You get associated to how you were feeling. You get associated to what was going on through your mind before I give you the words. And you might be saying, well, Shay, how can I do this? Well, there's a couple of different ways you can keep this personal journey. Some of you want to use it online. You can use something called Penzu. Now, if you never heard of Penzu, you can go to penzu.com, penzu.com, and it's an online journal. And this will allow you to start tracking your nose. This will allow you to start writing down the reasons why folks said no, they wouldn't meet with you. Reasons why they said no, they they wouldn't let you bid on a contract. The reason why they said no, they wouldn't partner you or they wouldn't get the deal. So I want you to use that. Others of you out there that don't want to use Pinzu.com, you can use Evernote. Now Evernote is another system that you can use. So go ahead, go ahead and jot that down. You can use Evernote. E V E R N O T E E V E R N O T E. It's called Evernote. So you can go out to Evernote right now 
and some of you can use Evernote in your business that's going to help you start doing it. Now, Shay, when I get these things, what do you want me to do? Well, I want you to start documenting each rejection that you're getting. So going forward, we're going to document. Now, what are we going to document, Shay? What are we going to document? Well, first, we're going to document the feelings that you have. So what were the what were you feeling? What was going on in your in your mind? Um, um, how did that rejection? What how did it personally impact you? Now I walk people through this a number of times, and it makes a huge difference for them. So step number one is we're going to what document each rejection and how we were feeling. Anything else you want to add? Step two. This is step two. Now step two is very important. This is the goal. Remember I said systems beat goals every single time. So I'm weaving in a system that you can use. Here's what you can do. Step two, step two is you can get 100 no's. What, Shay? 100 no's, yeah, yeah. See, when I was coming up, many folks always just simply said, ask someone, ask someone, ask someone. Just keep asking and someone's gonna say yes. What they never said was that if I had a goal of asking 100 customers, or prospects or clients to do something and I collect a hundred no's, that's a good sign. Now, along that journey of getting a hundred no's, you're gonna get some yeses. And, and I get it, I'm gonna go over rejection. We're gonna go over how you were feeling. We're gonna go over in, in a minute, you know, some ways that you can handle objections. But, but first, I want everyone right now who's listening to me, if, if you're signing up, you're saying, Shay, I'm willing to get a hundred no's. Shay, I'm willing to do a sales makeover. Shay, I'm willing to track it because what gets measured gets managed. Shay, I believe in that philosophy. Systems be goals every single time. And what gets measured, that's a thousand dollar idea, gets managed. Now, let me tell you what I want you to do because this, this created a breakthrough for one of my clients. And I know it will create, oops, it will create a breakthrough for you as well. And, and here's what I want you to jot down in your notes. If you're willing to get 100 no's and you're ready for a sales makeover, it doesn't cost you anything. There's, there's no revenue needed. There's no cash app. I want you to text the word sales makeover right now. Text the word sales makeover to this number, 202. Like do it now. Open up your, your text messenger on your phone and go ahead and text 202-270-1662. Now, after you text 202-270-1662, put down sales makeover get 100 no's. Just put down sales makeover, get 100 no's. Just put down sales makeover, get 100 no's. Now, I'm going to review your closing script, so I'm going to help you with that. Uh, I'm going to make sure you get the notes, so some of you just want the PowerPoint from this, and then also include your first name, so I can give you a, a private revenue momentum session. Include your last name, include your mobile number, and your best email. Now, when you text sales makeover to 202-270-1662, you can expect that it's going to be a good use of your time. You can expect to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me. Some of you are going to do it with me and some of you are going to do it with the team. A one-on-one -on -one session. And that one-on-one -on -one session is going to help you immediately in your business. Now, you must follow the instructions. You must include your first name. You must include your last name so we know who you are. Your best contact number so someone can reach out to you. And, and, and also include your best email. And text the word sales makeover. Do it now. Text the word sales makeover. Now, in getting to 100 no's, you're going to need some help along the way. So step three is there's some very specific scripts that we're going to have to develop in order to handle these rejections. Some very specific scripts. And you might be saying, well, Shay, what are they? What do I need? Well, some of you right now need to set more qualified appointments. If you get in front of more people, you will close more deals. And so go ahead and your notes, put down you need an, a, an appointment setting script because some of you, when you go to set appointments, you're getting rejected. People aren't registering, they aren't showing up. Some people don't agree to meet with you. And when you look at your calendar, your, 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 your schedule doesn't really reflect how good you are. And I believe that the number of your appointments that you set and you run over the next 30 days will be in direct proportion to the number of sales that you make. So some of you are getting, need that because you're like, okay, Shay, I need appointment scripts. Let me write that down. Some of you need closing scripts. You need to know what to say, 
when to say and how to say it when the client is ready to make a buying decision. So there's, there's a couple of things that a couple of like, like, okay, some of you need clothing scripts. Some of you need scripts when someone says, I don't have the money. So you need a, a closing script for that. So write that down your notes. You need a script for that. Some of you need a script for um, um, what you will learn when, you, when you're telling them about what they're going to get or what they're going to learn or what's included in the package. You don't want to wing that. You don't want to shoot from the hip. You don't want to shoot from the lip. You want to be continuously, spontaneously brilliant. Or, or some of you, as, as you're watching right now and you're tuning in, you're like, but Shay, you don't understand. I feel this way and, and it's uncomfortable for me, Shay. And, and, I, and I really struggle with that. And some of you have a team and, and you're trying to teach your team. So let me give you something to give your team and let me give you some little revenue therapy that rejection therapy might be good for you as well because today is your January 1st. You're going to get this thing right. Today is your January 1st. You're going to crack this code, by the way. And so here's what I want you to know. Don't make the sale about you. I was working with someone recently and they said, I did everything I was supposed to do and I don't know why they didn't buy. I don't know why, Shay, they really needed it. You know what I told them? Don't make the sale about you. If you had talked to me five years ago and you were struggling with closing and you want to know what you were doing wrong, I would say, don't make the sale about you. When, when, when you think they went with a competitor or you, they say their pricing is too high or they say they got to talk to a partner, I would say the same thing to you. Don't make the sale about you. That's not what you do. Because see, here's what I know. Most no's start in your mind. It starts with a belief system. And so one of the things you have to do along this journey is you have to, and this will be a topic for another time when I get to mindfulness, but you have to really develop emotional intelligence of how you control your emotions. If you don't know about emotional intelligence, you can, you, can, you can go over, you can Google Emotional Intelligence. There's even a great book, Emotional Intelligence 2.0. If you buy the hardback book, at the back of the book, there's a test that you can take to kind of understand your emotional intelligence level. It can be tested. And the person that got the highest rating on all the tests so far is President number 44. His name is President Barack Obama. And you think about, he's already communicated, you think about how, cool he is or some women would say how suave he is and others say how intelligent he is and how smart he is and he's all that but he was able to control his emotional intelligence and as you're going through the closing process and you're going through the handling objection process when i start teaching you some of these very specific skills for some of you it's going to be about really developing your emotional intelligence and and that that's something that i want you to think about so here's what i want you to do i want you to start expecting to get more yeses expect for someone to say yes expect for someone to say this is for me expect to tell yourself every single morning you wake up that i am a champion that i have what it takes that i will be successful that i can make a difference in the world that i can change lives if they let me just like you right now if you tune in when i give you these techniques i will change your life if you let me this will change your business if you let it my promise to you, if you just hang in there and just believe in the in your in the in our mission, our goals and objectives, I'm training you and walking you through the best ideas that I've done with so many other clients, that that this is the missing piece, that you are a champion. So I want you to believe these four things. Just jot these four things, and I'll get to some good stuff. Put these four things in your notes because this this might be all you need right now as you go through this. First, I want you to believe that I have the will to win. Write that down right now in the notes. I have the will to win. Just put that in. I have the will, the mental capacity right now to win. I have the will because will beats skill every day. So I have the will to win. I'm here. I showed up. It says a lot about me already. I'm in the conversation and you are. But also yourself that I have greatness inside me, whether they buy from you or not. I have greatness inside me. And then as I learn this, as I get better at this, as I stay in the conversation, as I understand that selling will solve any of my business problems, I want to walk away from my job, Shay. Selling will solve that problem. Shay, I want to hire someone to help me along this journey because I know I need a team. Sales will solve any business problem. Shay, it's time for me to go to this seminar. It's time for me to go to this boot camp. It's time for me to go to this conference. 
I don't got the money. Sales will solve any business problem. It's time for me to build my website. It's time for me to improve my social media presence. It's time for me to build my media empire. But I got a lack of resources. Selling will solve any business problem. So I want you to tell yourself that I have greatness inside me. I don't want you to say it's corny. No, no. I have greatness inside me. And above all, Shay, here's what I want you to know. That the best is still yet to come. The best is still yet to come. If you believe that, hit the share button. Hit the watch party button. And just put the best. Or you put my best is yet to come. Just put my best. Make it real personal. Is yet to come. Go ahead right now. Hit that Hit that share button. Hit that watch party button right now. Hit, hit the button. If you're watching, the, listen to the podcast, you can do this. If you're on YouTube TV or if you're on Apple TV or if you're on Amazon Fire TV, that's okay. Make comments right below. We appreciate every single comment because the best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come because today is your January 1st. You're going to change some lives. Today is your January 1st. So now we're going to go ahead. We're going to get to the good stuff. We're going to get into objection handling techniques. I want you to think when you handle objections, what's your number one technique? I want you to take a moment right now and I want you to just rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 in terms of handling objections. Now, now one means you do an okay job. Depending on the mood you're in, how you're feeling, what's going on in your life that day. That's a one. 10 meaning you're the world's greatest person at handling objection. When you put down a 10, you're so good at handling closing objection, you're going to raise your hand. I'm going to bring you on the broadcast and you're going to teach your number one objection handling skills. If that's you and you're listening right now, rate yourself a 10. So first, rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. Now, when... <laughs> If you was at one of our live seminars, uh, how do you think most people rate themselves on a scale of one to 10? You think they rate themselves a one or a 10? Yeah. Most or five or below in the area of handling objections. In fact, they never thought about it like that. They just thought they were talking to the person and they had good reasons for doing that. So I want you to start with that. Now I want you to imagine if you raise yourself a five, you go to a six. You raise yourself a six, you go to a seven. You raise yourself a seven, you go to an eight. You get the point. You go up one notch just by improving your objection handling skills and being in this type of conversation and it being top of mind to you, here's the question I have for you. The question I want you to answer right now. How much extra money are you leaving on the table at the end of each month by not handling objections or your team not handling objections? Now, this is not a beat me up session. This is not a beat me up session. This is not a, oh, no, no. This is like just you and I having a conversation. Like you and I, like I'm hanging out with you right now. You might be listening to me through the speakers on your on your headset right now. Um, you might be watching me on an iPad. Some of you have the phone propped up and you're watching it and listening to it right now. And others of you in front of your computer, you're doing other things, but you stopped for a second. You said, wait a minute, I got to rate myself. Shay. I've never done that. That's why you're here. I'm glad you're in this conversation. Now, how much money am I am leaving on the table? See, that's a good question. Okay, let's just say you're leaving $5,000 on the table. And this is over and beyond what you're making now. So you improve your objection handling techniques. You get a little bit better. Just you. Forget the team. Just say you. And there's an extra $5,000 per month. It's pouring into your bank account month after month after month, over and beyond whatever you're earning today. Here's my question to you. What would you do with the money? How would your life be different? Extra $5,000. Some of you didn't move the needle at all. Others of you, you listening right now, $5,000, you were like, Shay, that's, that's some good cash for where I'm at right now. And it could certainly change my life. You know what? I believe you. I believe you right now with every ounce of fiber in my body and whether it's 5,000 or 10,000 or 20,000, it doesn't really matter. What I want you to know is that it's possible. What I want you to know, you can give yourself a raise right now. What I want you to know that all roads in business, all your marketing, all your social media, all of your automation tools, all of your branding, all of your videos, all of your webinars, all of your networking, all your conference calls, all roads in business lead to one place, and that one place is a professional sales presentation. So we're going to take it up another notch. We understand that systems beat goals every single time. 
We, so now we're going to implement a system which is duplicatable, a system which is repeatable, a system that's the fastest way to success, a system that leads you to a goal when you do it on a daily basis and you are consistent. We're going to implement a objection handling system into the business. Why is that, Shay? Why is that? Here's what I want you to know. Here's your new philosophy. Here's what I want you to change right now in your life. I want you to write this down in your notes. Put this in your notes right now. Objections are nothing but questions in disguise. No, seriously, like put that down in your notes right now. Objections are nothing but questions in disguise. And here's the punchline. Here's what I want you to know. Look, look I had a breakthrough three years ago with just this one idea from a guy who manages a team of telecom, telemark, uh, telecom. They're in the telecom industry and he's selling to business clients. And he was looking for a breakthrough for his clients because telecom had become, at least voice products, had become such a commodity. And, and I was having a conversation with him and they were struggling, not with sales, but I told him with hands and objections. And that might be you right now. And I asked, what would it look like if you could improve an objection handling area? Do you know what he said? About $20,000, Shay. My team gets it right and they get a certain proportion hit their quota. It's another $20,000 in my pocket because they're not hitting it right now. I said, for $20,000, if you gave me one idea that I could share with you, here's the idea. Objections are an ideal opportunity to close the sale. It's when we use the right words at the right time, which I want to talk about, and we understand something, that it's the best opportunity. They're right there. They're right on the edge, and they're so close. He took me up on it. As a result of taking me up on it, he didn't earn that $20,000. His team peak performed for about 60 days. He earned three times that amount in one month. Now, can I take credit for it? No. Some coaches, consultants, they act like they took all the credit. I gave them the idea and they did exactly what I told them to do. And look what they did. That's not true. But here's what I do know. Not for me anyway. What I do know is that we put his foot here. I'll say his foot was here and I helped him get over the hump. Like handling the objection was just a little bit of push that he needed. And some of you, you just need a little help. You need a little little push, a little nudge to get over the fence. $60,000. Is everyone results like that? Heck no. But whether yours is $5,000 a month for the rest of your life or $2,000 for the rest of your life, it's possible for you. Because customer objections, they're really just buying signals. They're buying signals. They're time for us not to hit the red light. See, some people, when they get objections, a red light comes up. So they're like, I got to talk to my partner. Err, I don't have the money. Err, we tried this. We tried this before and it didn't work. Err, they think red light, red light, red light. It's not a red light. Someone write down below. It's a green. It's a green light, baby. <laughs> because those are buying signals. But you have to understand the key philosophy of what drives it. And the key philosophy really is objections are an ideal opportunity for closing the sale. It is not when we slow down. It's when we speed up. It's not when we slow down. It's when we what? Speed up. So I'm giving a workshop. About 20 people in the room. It's a very small workshop. It's a mastermind intensive for a colleague. And I'm there. And someone raised their hand. You might be raising your hand right now. And they said, Shay, what is the toughest objection that comes up? And I'll go over some objections in a little while. And I thought for a moment. Now, I've been asked this question before from veterans like the folks sitting in that room. And so I told the same answer I've been saying for about the last 10 plus years. And this is what I share with, with, with her. And I'm going to share it with you as well. And I said, look, the toughest objection is the one you don't recognize because you have created it in your head. And it's, it's called the invisible objection. It's the one that doesn't exist. You created it. That's why you didn't ask for the order. You created it. So you told a narrative before you got there. You, you created something that did not exist unless you can read minds unless you can predict the future, unless you're a genie and you can see what's going on through some crystal ball, you, we create these objections in our head that doesn't exist until we validate that they exist. And once you get the skill 
it takes it to a whole nother level. Let me just give you the, 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 the seven objections you can't overcome doing a sale. I'll give you the seven objections you can, and I'll tell you what you can do, but let's talk about the ones that you just can't. Like, there's no way around it. It's hard to come back. So you can't. That, that I can't. We should change that. It shouldn't be I can't. We should just say toughest objections that are tough to overcome. Yeah, they're tough. Anything, anything's possible. Yeah, let, let's change that. Yeah, let's change that. I don't even like the way that looks. But but anyway, let's 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 just uh, so one is just a long-winded presentation. <laughs> Talking too much and sidetracking. So you, you didn't stay the course. You were winging it, you shoot from the hip, you shoot from the lip, and you didn't quite stay there. A another objection you really can't overcome is nervousness or insecurity when you're hesitant. Here's why. Because when that, when that happens, you start confusing and sending confusing signals. And the message that I want you to write in your notes, if you're taking notes, hopefully you're taking notes because superstars, they're always writing down great ideas. The note I want you to put in your, in your notes right now is a confused mind rarely buys. Put that in your notes. A confused mind rarely buys. So how are we going to overcome objections, Shay? I, yeah, I've got to be confident. I get that. The third one is lack of clarity and focus. That gets into what I was saying. I got to hit it myself. A confused mind really rarely buys. So once they're off target, then it makes it so much challenging for you. It makes it tougher for you. Or, or if you don't slow down, and I don't teach these techniques, some of my colleagues do, and you're using, uh, you're using high pressure selling techniques. You seem pressed. You're pushing a little harder than you know you need to. Or maybe sometimes you, you ignore the objection. You keep pushing forward. And so as a result, number five is ignoring the objections or giving answers that aren't your best answers because you were winging it. You were shooting from the hip. You were shooting from the lip. You were trying to be continuously, spontaneously brilliant. But number six is where I see it happen all the time. I mean, number six is like, it, it, it's like really where the breakdown takes place. And I want you to look at this one. And I want you to ask yourself and rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 on how you do number six. And these are the seven tough, toughest objections to overcome. So when we create these barriers, it's like trying to run a race and you've got hurdles. I mean, I, you have hurdles in front of you. You got to keep jumping and I get to run a 50 yard dash as fast as I can. Even if you're faster than me, if you got high hurdles, it might be hard for you to get over them. So let me give you number six because number six is, is very, very important. And it's really the failure to establish value. See, it's been often said in this industry that people buy you. And they said that for so long. I was taught that way, old school, people buy you. And I don't think that's true anymore. They gotta like you, they gotta trust you, you gotta have a pleasing personality. But at the end of the day, they buy the value you say you're going to deliver. They buy the benefits they're getting from putting their money down. So when you don't establish value inside of your presentation, that's one objection that is really, really hard to overcome. And number seven, number seven should be like a rock star for many of you. Just failure to ask for the order. Some people just don't ask for the order. They never ask. Never asked. I was with someone listening to calls, and this is a little over about about two years ago now. And um, my job was to listen in as they were making their phone calls. They were running appointments, and I asked them. I said, "On every order, we're going to ask them to take a step forward." And the person proceeds to tell me that they didn't ask because they could tell that they really weren't into it. Like this wasn't for them. They could tell by the way they were answering the questions. I said, "But we never asked. Like we never asked. How do we know what they're going to do?" If we don't ask, we know it's already a no. And I want you to think for a moment, like how much money have you left on the table by not asking? By simply not asking them to take an action. For some of you, it could have been $100,000 the last 12 months. For some of you, just in the last 90 days alone, there could have been another $10,000 left on the sale because you never asked for the referral. You never asked for the appointment. More importantly, you never asked for the sale. And you have a team of folks, some of you are running a team of folks 
that aren't asking on a consistent basis. They're not getting 100 no's because they don't have the distinction. Some of you were paying attention early on. No, our goal is 100 no's. So if that's our goal, then the question is, how do we get to our goal? The question is, how do we get there? So the three toughest objections that are out there. Let me give you the three toughest customer objections I think that exist. Number one is the indifference objection. There's no need. They don't have a need, want, or desire. So what is our goal if they have no need? You've got to translate the I have no need into prove that I will benefit from your product or services. So when they're saying they don't have a need, they're not saying they don't have a need. They're saying I need you to prove the benefits, the tangible benefits, the intangible benefits, um, tangible benefits of what can they touch? What can they feel? You improve your selling skill, tangible cash is in the bank. You can go to your online checking account and see money in your bank. Then there's intangible benefits. The intangible benefits are the benefits they can't touch. The fact that you improve your selling skills and you improve your objection handling skills, you have more confidence. You have greater clarity. You go after larger accounts. You have peace of mind. I can't prove that. But I know it's a benefit that you get from just being in this particular conversation. And so you think about what's the second one? The second one is no money. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, I want you to think right now, how do you respond when a person says, I have no money? Like, 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 I have no money. Like, now how do you respond? What's the psychology behind that? I'm really talking about neural linguistic sales here, right? I'm getting into neural linguistic sales. That's the study of language patterns and how it impacts the sales process. But but I want you to think, when they when they hear no money, like, what's the psychology? What are you hearing? What's going through your mind? Translate no money and to show me how this product will pay for itself. I don't have the money just to be throwing it away. I don't have the money just to be just to be just to be pushing this out here and no one is and no one is and no one is listening to me. No, Shay, I don't have that type of time. So that leads us to number three, right? And, and number three is very important. So now you understand number one. You understand you got to translate to the you got to share the benefits. You understand number two. How will it pay for itself? So number three is just procrastination. There is no hurry. Now, when you get here, you got to be thinking about the what's the consequences if they don't take action. Now, I'm going to get into some language patterns in a minute. But if they don't take action, what's the consequences of not taking action? If I don't do it, so what? So you got to translate no hurry into explain how I win by buying now. Take a picture of that. Write that in your notes. Don't miss that one. I got to explain how they win by buying right now in this present moment. See, that's how you translate no hurry into a sale. I'm going to get in some language. Don't, I'm gonna, I got some more stuff. I got it. But, but here's what I know. I know just those three, you have an uh, understanding, which is neuro linguistic sales. That's the study of language patterns. Neural is their mind. And you understand the mindset. You understand the psychology behind it. It helps you frame your narrative a lot differently because the purpose of handling objection is not to overcome the objection. The purpose of handling objection is just to keep it going. This is this is this is create a breakthrough for so many folks, so many folks. So here's what I want you to know. You can have sales without being salesy. I'm going to teach you in a minute because I don't want you trying to be slick and sleazy and trying to convince someone or persuade someone. That's not you. You can have sales without being salesy. And I'm going to prove that to you. I'm going to teach you that right now because great things happen when you solve people's problems. Someone jot this down in your notes. Someone put this down in your notes. Please put this in your notes. Put this in your notes. Someone put this right below the video if you can. People will pay you today if you help them solve a problem today. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. Hear me. People will pay you today if you help them solve a problem. When? Today. When? Today. When? Today. You're in the problem solving business. You're in the what business? You're in the what business? You're in the problem solving business. Now, some of you out there, you're listening saying, Shay, I, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm I'm, 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 I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm smelling what you're cooking in 
the kitchen. And you're going you're gonna to get down to the seven or 12 common objections. You're going to break this thing down for me. I need some revenue therapy right now. Shay, this is what I need. This, I'm here at the right place. I need right now in my business revenue therapy, rejection therapy. If that's you and you're ready for a breakthrough, do me a favor. Text the word sales makeover. Like, get your phone out right now. If you did it earlier, do it again. Get your phone out right now and text the word sales makeover. Now, at the top, you got to put a phone number in. Put in 202-270-1662. I personally want to help five of you. I purposely, purposely want to make a difference for you. So text sales makeover to 202 202- 270-1662. Now you're going to get your closing script review. You get the notes and a one-on-one customized revenue momentum session. Now I may call you myself, make it a call from my team, but you got to, when you text, put your first name in so we know who we're calling, please. Put your last name in. That's important. It might be more than one Robin. Put your mobile number. So that's the best number for us to contact you and your email. So we can email you the notes, email you the details. And I want you to do it now. Do it when? Now. Do it when? Now. Do it when? Now. So right now, go ahead right now, text the word sales makeover. And this is going to change your life. This is going to change your business. Just this one conversation, you walk away with something customized for your industry, customized for your target audience, customized for the people you talk to. Text the word sales makeover to 202 270 1662. Text your first name. We're requiring that. Text your last name. That's important. Text your best contact number so we can reach out to you in your email. This is your time. This is your year. Selling will solve any business problem. You're focused. You're on it right now. And and if you have a desire to get all the resources you want in your business, you have a desire to make a difference for many more folks, you have a desire to go to another level, then this is your time. Go ahead and text that in right now. That'll make the world a difference for you. Now, the good news is, as I was saying, there's only seven to 12 common objections in any industry. Isn't that good news? So we're gonna do a special card game that can boost your objection handling skills. So I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step how to do that. So here's step one, everyone follow along. Step one, write down 12 typical customer rejections you have. Now, you can do it on a three by five card. You can do it on a piece of paper. You can do it in your, in your photo. You can do it in your notes. I want you to do that right now. So you have seven to 12 common objections. Then step two is shuffle the cards and then face them down on a table before you. So this is going to sound like overly simplistic, right? But no, seriously, we're creating our own objection handling cards. This is how you get better. This is how you get better. Practice, 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 but practice the right way, the right method and the right techniques. So yeah, get these cards. You're going to go buy these three by five cards from a local store. You're going to write down an objection on each card. Then you're going to shuffle the cards face down. And then step number three is you're going to practice your presentation and interrupt yourself with the objection written on the card. Read it out loud and handle the objection on the spot. You're going to get better. You're going to get better. You're going to get better. You're, you're using this technique because this works. This is this one of them. This, this works. This is going to help you. You got to get the reps in. You got to get the reps in because step number four, if you thought you were done, no, you're not. After a few minutes, interrupt yourself again and repeat the process until you've covered every one of your objection cards. Now, there's only seven to 12 common objections in the industry. You're writing them down, but this is going to help you. For many of you, it's going to help you do what you need to do in the moment. It's going to help you really think on your feet. It's going to help you as you're having the conversation with the person feel more comfortable, feel more confident because you've heard it before. You've been there. You've been in your presentation. You were interrupted. Well, I I tried it before. It didn't work. You're in your presentation and you've been interrupted. I don't think we have a budget for this. And and you're used to accustomed to handling these on the spot you're going to practice and you're going to get better you're going to practice and you're going to get better you're going to practice and you're going to get better now here are techniques for handling the objection so i'm going to give you a couple of objection handling techniques right now 
like in this moment. We're going to go through a few right now. The first objection handling technique is. Oh, you got to change Scott. The question technique. Is that your only concern? Is that your only concern? I'm going to write it down. Is that your only concern? So you get to the end of the presentation, whatever your closing script is, you say the final, final words. How do you feel about attending my conference? How do you feel about hiring me as a speaker for your conference? <clears throat> How do you feel about hiring me as a coach? How do you feel about signing up with me as your agent for insurance? And then the person gives you an objection. One of your objections. I'm already working with someone. And so now you've got to say something because there's only three ways to handle an objection. You can handle up, you can ignore an objection. And Tony Robbins teaches this. He does very well because he knows the first objection is not the true objection. So he acts like he never heard it. Doesn't work for me, but it works for some folks. Um, and it depends on your buyer pro, I mean, on your signature selling style as well. But I don't have time to get into that right now. Um, or the second way you can handle an objection is you can handle it in the body of your presentation. And that's fine too. They interrupted you, you gotta handle it. Or you can wait till you get to the end, and that's what I'm doing right now. You get to the end of your presentation, you're done, there's nothing else to talk about, and you say, how do you feel about hiring me as your coach? How do you feel about moving forward and bringing me as a speaker for your program and paying me $10,000? Person says, I don't have a budget. You can handle with one objection is, thank you so much, but the punchline is, is that your only concern? Is that your only concern? I don't have the time, Salima. Is that your only concern? I need to think about it. Is that your only concern? Now, you're not going to repeat the same one over and over and over again, but this could be your very first objection. I don't have a budget for that. Is that your only concern? I'm currently under contract. It doesn't come up until three months from now. Thanks for telling me. I appreciate that. This has been a great conversation. Is that your only concern? See, now you're putting the ball back into their court. You're doing the investigative technique and you're saying, I heard you. I get it. You might even say that. I heard you. I get it. I understand. Many of my clients have been there. But let me ask you a question. They're going to say, what? And you're going to say, is that your only concern? A very, very simple technique. You can do that to me. I told you I'm going to give you some objection handling techniques and I'm doing that right now. But the first one is, is that your only concern? Now, person moves you say how do you feel about moving forward person says i gotta i gotta think about it now this is called the isolate technique the isolate technique is other than blank is there anything else preventing you from taking action today other than i got talking over my wife is there anything else preventing you from taking action today how do you feel about bringing me in as a speaker we don't have a budget other than not having a budget, is there anything else preventing you from taking action today? I'm currently under contract. Is there anything other than being under contract? Is there anything else preventing you from moving forward today? See, you can layer these objections on top of each other, but I want you to have some techniques when you go in. I don't want you to act like you don't know. I want you to know right now. And you can use any one of these techniques or some of you may need a combination of techniques. The next technique I want to share is called the investigative technique. Now, what do you think what you're doing today? And what do you think? How can you do it better? The investigative technique says something like this. Tell me more about that. So I'm with a client. I, I want them to take a step and I want them to attend my two day boot camp. Five thousand dollars. So we talked about it, talked about it, talked about it. And I asked the person, how do you feel about moving forward and attending my two day boot camp? Is seven thousand dollars. I gotta think about it, Shay. I could acknowledge that, but then the punchline is acknowledge. Oh, thank you for sharing. Very reasonable request. Can you tell me more about that? So when they say something, you're gonna re you're gonna have a response that allows you to say, "Tell me more about that." It's called the investigative technique. Tell me more about that. Now, is that always applicable? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm thinking about going to your intensive, but it's in March. I got to catch a flight. Um, it's going to cost me a little bit outside my budget, and I got to get a sitter for my son. Got that. Tell me a little more about that then. Why is it important for you to be there? See, I, I like the investigative technique. I like them all because if I didn't, I, I wouldn't have told you to start off 
with, is that your only concern? Getting a babysitter? Other than you have to get a babysitter and you weren't really planning this, is there anything else from preventing you from taking action? See, I could have used any of these. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Some of you want extra $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 with your team. But in order to do that, you've got to equip your team with the skill set that they need or I say improve their skill set from where they are today so that they can handle objections. Some of you want to sell low ticket items or big ticket items. It doesn't matter. Some of you sell products, water, or, or whatever it is you're, you're selling. And if you can get these techniques for your team, it's golden. Some of you are already doing this, but you just never knew. You were doing it naturally. But isn't it so much better to know that you know that you know? Some of you, you can use the, like I said, you layer these techniques on top of each other. Some of you are going to use the story technique. And, and the story technique is one of the most powerful ones. They're all powerful. They all work. Every one of these techniques I've used is proven. It's not about the technique. It's about what you can do. It's about you earning extra income and understand that. So, so the story technique is you would start off with a narrative. You're talking to the person. Shay, it's not in the budget. It sounds great. It's not in the budget. And I can respond after I do my greetings. Thank you so much for sharing that. We've had a great conversation. That reminds me of a client who was in a similar situation. Her name was Carol. And let me share what they did. Carol never really had a budget for sales training. Matter of fact, most of my clients don't have a budget for sales training. But one of the things that they know is that you can borrow money from one bucket and put it into another bucket. And that's what the client did. They went and said, you know what? I never thought about this. I didn't even know the thing even existed, to be honest with you. But, but now that you mentioned it, it sounds good to have someone really doing all of my calls. It sounds good to have someone else that is my sales team because I can't do it all. And so they took money from another area and moved it over to this area. Even if they was under contract, I can tell a story. That reminds me of a client, of a, a story of a client who was in a similar situation for you. They were under a contract with another coach. Let me share what they did. I first explained I work well with other coaches. I then explained that our team provides the service. So our team is going to do the work, which means they're making the phone calls. They're setting the appointments. The sales team is going to make the sales. They're going to qualify. So this won't interfere with what you're doing with your coach. The person took a step because of that reason, because it's not uncommon for some folks to work with multiple consultants just like um, restaurants have multiple chefs and each chef may have his own specialty. But the point I want to make to you is think about how you're handling objections right now. Think about if you're using any of these techniques consciously or subconsciously. And then think about the power of using these or layering these in your conversation and think about what it's going to do for your team. See, see, this is the greatest breakthrough. Asking for the order was a mental thing, a psychology breakthrough. You've asked them, how do you feel about hiring me as a speaker? And the person says, I'm not sure you have the experience. Matter of fact, I just was talking to someone recently and we're working with a, a company that has a restaurant. And um, we've never worked with this type of restaurant, not even this industry before. It's a brick and mortar shop. And it's in a town, a town, literally a small town. And I told the person, I said, it reminds me of a client who was in a similar situation as you. We hadn't done any work in their industry. They were in the medical field doing certifications for nurses and doctors. We never did that. Let me share what they did. They took a step for us because our principles, our foundation was in harmony and in line with what they were looking to do. And we could borrow best practices and start it in their practice. And they took a baby step with us. And then we monitored and managed as we went along. And it worked. See, the story technique for some of you, you're leaving a whole lot of money on the table. Okay, the next technique that I want to share with you is called what would need to happen in order to dot, dot, dot. What would need to happen in order for dot, dot, dot. So what would need to happen in order for you to take a step? What would need to happen in order for us to work with you? What would need to happen in order for you to hire our company? See, for some of you out there right now, what would need to happen in order for you to text in the word sales makeover? What would need to happen in order for you to have a conversation? 
See, you're layering one technique upon another technique upon another technique. We're building the foundation in the time that I have. I can share a hundred different techniques. But for some of you, this is the only technique you lead right now in your business. And, and, and what I want to do for you, for where you are, for some of you that it makes sense and makes sense, I want you to text the word sales makeover. So I want you to open up your phone browser right now and then go to the, the text app and then type in the number 202-270-1662. No cash app needed, no credit card, no payments. And then once you type in 202-270-1662, go ahead and text the word sales makeover right below it, sales makeover in that little space there. Include your first name, your last name, your mobile number, and best email. You believe this systems beat goals every single time. And let us introduce a, a, a system to you that's going to help you in your business and give you one idea or two ideas or three ideas, but I promise you one that you can use or you can teach to your team is going to help you. Yeah, I have used the closing script. Got it. We'll get the notes. Got it. And it is a one-on-one -on -one customized revenue session. For some of you, this is exactly what you need for where you are in your business because this is your time. This is your time. This is your time. And for you, the best is yet to come. So go and take the step. Worst case scenario is you text in and we show up at the meeting. You say, Shay, it just wasn't a good use of my time. And after a few minutes, we, we depart. Best case scenario, you get one idea. You teach it to your team and it forever changes the trajectory of your team. So go ahead right now. Just text the word in sales makeover to 202-270-1662. Uh, include your first name, include your last name, include your best contact number and your email. Let's do a sales makeover. If you never even had a sales makeover conversation, this is it. I'm just giving you the tip of the iceberg right now. In the time I have, I'm giving you the tip of, tip of the iceberg. But I want to just review some of these techniques really, really quick that we just went over. A few we went over on the techniques you can use to handle objections. One technique we said is the question technique. I don't have the money. Is that your only concern? I don't have the time. Is that your only concern? I tried this before and it didn't work. Is that your only concern? Now I'm giving you the punchline and you can, you can fill in the blanks and you don't have to say the same one over and over again, but you now have at least one response. If I was listening to you give a presentation and I was to stop you cold and say, I don't have the money. Why are you spending all this time on me? And I would stop cold and say, well, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Is money your only concern? Is that your only concern? No, you're wasting my time. Okay, is that your only concern? And so now we can have a conversation, keep the conversation going. The second one was the isolated technique, which was other than blank, I'm sure you have some other concerns. Is there anything else that's preventing you from moving forward today? I don't have the money or time. <coughs> I don't have the time. Tell me more about that. I don't have the time. That reminds me of a client who was in a similar situation. They didn't have the time. Let me share what they did and the results they're getting today. I don't have the time. What would need to happen in order for you to make for you to have more time to do the things you want to do? See, we're walking them through step by step kind of what they can do. And, and I know as you're listening right now, you're like, whoa, Shay, this is a breakthrough. Shay, I'm writing it down. And I know you're tuned in because one of the things I know about you is I know that an entrepreneur's light is never out. An entrepreneur's light is always on. <laughs> and your light is on right now because you know you can get better. You wrote It's My Time and you're ready for your breakthrough because today is your January 1st. And if you crack that code on closing, you crack the code on handling objection, you have some revenue therapy, which means an infusion of cash in your business to allow you to purchase the resources. Oh, come on, somebody, watch out. It's about to get on. It's about to be on and popcorn, as they say. What I like to do right now is just take a moment and for some of you, let you know that we are the sales team that you've been looking for. You're like, Shay, I heard all this about objections. I heard all this stuff about closing. I've heard it all. I even texted the word sales makeover. But what can someone just do this for me? Can I just have, while I'm out creating product, while I'm out creating new services, while I'm out dealing with clients, can someone else worry about all that clothes and stuff and just bring in the money? Can I get a team to do it for me? Absolutely. Let me show you a little about why we're the sales team that you've been looking for. Hey, what's up, guys? 
My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. And if you're like a number of my clients right now where you are sick and tired of talking to unqualified people who don't want to do business with you or you're tired of tracking down people and trying to convince them and persuade them to do business with you and you're just wasting your time or you're just totally frustrated and it's time for you to increase your sales, then we are the sales team that you've been looking for. You see, the number one challenge facing entrepreneurs today is either lost leads, that means they met someone, someone opted on their page, someone signed up on their webinar, uh, someone said they were interested, and no one could follow up with them, no one could track them down, and you had to do it all yourself. Or you spend a lot of time talking to someone, you spend a lot of time sending them information only to find out they were unqualified. You're like, I'm sick of talking to unqualified people. So if you don't want to sell, or you hate to sell because you want to do something else with your time, something else with your labor, like spend it with those that you love the most or doing something entirely different, then I want you to pay close attention. I want you to text this number because we're going to partner with you in two ways. First, we're going to look at doing a complete sales makeover for you. Okay, that's number one. And then number two, we're going to set all the qualified appointments you need without your labor so you can make sure things get done and or and or we're gonna have a dedicated sales team to go out and actually make the sale get the credit card get the contract and bring it out we are the sales team that you've been looking for so it's just time for you to do a sales makeover it's time for you to look at your whole sales process and have a structure a system a sequence so you can be scalable and you can really generate those sales here's what i want you to do for your sales makeover text the word makeover do it right now open up your 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 phone right now text the word make over one word make over to 202 999 3515 let me get that to you again text the word make over so you can look at your business to 202 999 3515 and just follow the instructions so all you gotta do is follow the instructions and let's make over your business my name is Shay Brown the happy entrepreneur make it a great day everyone and we're gonna make some good things happen we connect again next time God bless and I'll see you on the other side well it's a great day my name is Shay Brown and welcome back to the happy entrepreneur show the number one business development and revenue focused late night show in the country. We're here. We're talking about rejection therapy, how to get revenue back in your business. And I know as you're listening right now that, that you're a rock star. Um, I know you're incredible. I, I know that this is the time for you really to have a breakthrough. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you as you're listening to me right now to really focus on improving your objection handling skills. Get some revenue therapy. Some rejection therapy that leads to revenue therapy. Let me say that again. Rejection therapy that leads to revenue therapy because this is your time. This is your moment. This is your year. And together, we're going to make a difference. Together, we're going to solve more problems. Together, we're going to make a change. And I want you to know as you're listening to me that today is your January 1st. You're going to get this thing right. Today is your January 1st. Systems be goals every single time today is your january 1st you're here because an entrepreneur's light is never out it is always on you're here because you understand that all roads in business all of your marketing all of your sales all of your social media all of your trainings all of your sessions that you have with your team it all leads to one place a professional sales presentation that's where all your training leads and so we want you to be ready. We want you to be prepared. We want you to have the best ideas on the planet, the modern ideas, not the old way they taught us, but what's going on today. And above all, I want you to know that I believe in you. As we close out, I want you to look right below the video, look right below the video. I want you to write, today is my January 1st. I'm going to serve more people. Today is my January 1st. Serve, then sell. Today is my January 1st. Serve, then sell. And that's our methodology. That's what we believe in. You are a successful CEO. And I want you to know as you're listening right now that, that I, I, Shay Brown, I believe in every single one of you. Somebody was asking me the other day, they say, Shay, how do you keep up with all this? How do you know? I said, look, the, re the reason I know is that anyone that, that holds the belief, that holds the belief that this is their year, 
anyone that understands that systems be goals every single time and they're focused on their systems anyone that understands the 4s formula that sell systems plus strategy plus sales equals a successful ceo anyone that understands that a system is duplicatable is the fastest way to success that a strategy is how you implement the system that you're working on and you're working right now on closing systems and ejection handling systems and anyone that needs more sales so they can have more cash flow in their business and get the resources they want and anyone as they're listening and paying attention right now that understands what a successful ceo is a person with more cash flow more profits more freedom to spend time with the ones they love the most and to do what they want to do when they want to do it then every single day when your feet hit that ground i want you to tell yourself that i am a successful ceo systems be goals every single time. Let me say it again. Systems be goals every single time. I am a successful CEO because systems be goals every single time. I am a successful CEO because systems be goals every single time. Would that be drilling your head? I am a successful CEO because systems be goals every single time. And if where you are is all about the systems, if where you are is just like, I got to make sure I have the right systems in place, Shay, then I'm going to encourage you one last time to text the word sales makeover. As we close out, text the word sales makeover to 202-270-1662. Again, 202-270-1662. When you text the word sales makeover, include your first name, include your last name, include your best contact number, and include your email so we can get you the notes. And let's make sure you are a successful CEO because you know this systems be goals every single time. <laughs> I'm looking forward to working with you. I'm personally going to call. You can get a call within 24 hours and that tomorrow. And let's sit down. Let's have a conversation about your business. Let's just chat about what you're doing. But let's, let me share an idea, maybe one or two objection handling techniques that are very specific to your business. Because you understand that systems be goals every single time. They do. So with that being said, my name, by the way, for those folks that are just tuning in, because today is your January 1st and you are a successful CEO. With that being said, my name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we'll make some good things out. We connect again next time. God bless. And I wish every single one of you much success. Peace. It's been fun. Bye bye for now. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, check. Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we win, no matter what. Man. Got money on my mind, Man. I can never Man. get enough. And every time I step Man. up in the building, yeah. everybody yes. hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Thank you, thank you, Captain.